Heritage Documentation Programs is actually comprised of three different programs, the first of which is the Historic American Building Survey, also known as HABS, and that was established in 1933 as a partnership through the National Park Service, the American Institute of Architects, and the Library of Congress. In 1969, the American Historic American Engineering Record, or HARE, was established, and that is partnered with the American Society of Civil Engineers and four other engineering societies. In 2000, we added the Historic American Landscape Survey, known as HALS, and that is partnered with the American Society of Landscape Architects. So coming into this project, I knew a little bit about HABS documentation, and particularly about historical contexts. One of the things we'd learned in graduate school was how to research a building fully, not just the building itself, but what happened in it and around it that gave it its historic significance. So that aspect of the, of the project, which was sort of my piece of it, I was pretty comfortable with. What I hadn't observed firsthand was the actual process of collecting the HABs documentation, the measured drawings, the photographs, um, all that goes into doing a really good set of documents. HABs really invented how to thoroughly record a historic building. Um, for those of us who work in historic preservation, we learned how we would go in and measure and record a building based on the processes that HABs had already created. So we receive documentation through a variety of different methods. One is being partnerships through other federal agencies, state agencies, and local governments. We also receive it through mitigation through Section 106 and 110 of the National Historic Preservation Act of 1966 as amended. And we also receive documentation through prize competitions as well as donations. And such an example of a donation would be the Georgia State Capitol documentation. Georgia chapter of the American Institute of Architects had been working uh, for a number of years to bring attention to the historic character of the state's capital here in Atlanta. It became apparent that there wasn't any really good existing condition documentation of the building. And um, I believe it was Tim Crimmins who initially thought about HABs and that HABs documentation would be a great first step that if we at least had the existing condition documentation in place that that would be a um, the first stepping stone to launch a true preservation plan for the building. I knew Bob Capish, um, who was then the head of the Historic American Building Survey, and I called him up and asked him if the uh, Habs would be interested in assisting in the documentation of the Georgia Capitol and to make it a uh, Habs uh, study. The Georgia State Capitol was documented to the level one, and that required the as built or current and as built drawings, as well as large format photography, color transparencies, and written data. So, one of the important aspects of this particular project was that I was charged to do a historical context of the building, not just a simple history of when and how it was constructed, and when and how it was changed, but to look at the fuller context that this Georgia State Capitol was in. So it was more, yes, it was a lot of it was architectural history, but social history, political history, racial history, all these things really came into play. I've done a number of sort of projects that involve large buildings or even groups of buildings, and uh, on a project like this, I'm really reliant on a historian to help me kind of focus on uh, the important elements. As in the case with the documentation of the Georgia State Capitol building, these projects often involve collaboration across different disciplines, including architects, landscape architects, engineers, photographers, and historians. In addition to the piece that we were working on, which was the measured drawings aided by Hab's photogrammetry, there was the um, large format photography, which really captures the building as it appears, and then the history of the building, which Ann Pharisee um, through, worked on through Georgia State, which was an incredibly important component because what Ann was uh, learning 
while she was researching, she would communicate to us and it would make us be aware of something we would not have otherwise been aware of. And then we could go out and look at the building with fresh eyes based on what she would have, have, have told us. So we were all working very, in a very integrated way. And I think it was really beneficial to the result. So the collection is available to the public at loc.gov, which is the website for the Library of Congress. The collection is available through the Prints and Photographs Division and is one of the most widely used collections in that division. The collection does include prints and photographs of resources of all types across the U.S. and its territories, including bridges, vernacular and high-style architecture, windmills, and the pueblos of the American Southwest. So one of the most important things I think about HAB's documentation is what you do with it. The fact that it exists and that it documents a building, of course, is really invaluable. But then what's done with that information in the future? So in the case of the Capitol, it was used to inform how the Capitol was rehabilitated. And part of that rehabilitation was a restoration, part of it was renovation, but all of it we knew was based in good documentation. Later on, we wrote a book about the Capitol, Democracy Restored, and the basis for that book was the history that was written. And similarly, on other projects I'm working on, that HABs documents are always a good starting point when you're trying to do research, when you're trying to learn more about a historic building. Mm -hmm.